Oh, Paul, I'll give Bubby the... <laughs> Bubby, if you want to go ahead and open us up. Heavenly Father, we come to you this evening, Lord, to thank you for another wonderful, beautiful day you give us to enjoy. And thank you, Lord, for your blessings. And thank you for everything you do for us and provide for us and health and strength you give us each day. Thank you, Lord, we'll be back in her house again this evening. Thank you for each one that's able to be out to see you, Lord. Pray for those who can't be here, whatever reason may be. We pray you'll keep blessing our church. Add to a soul being saved. Bless Gabe as he leads the service this evening. And Mike, he comes to each Bible study. Just bless them and their family, Lord. Forgive me where I fail you, Lord. Strength me in the faith and help me be what you damn it to be. Help me be a blessing to people. Pray we can always have a great desire to be out in your house. Each time the doors are open, keep me healthy and safe so I can be here. In Christ's name I pray. Amen. 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 I do need your prayers this evening. An awful emotional day. We lost a friend this morning. Uh, Randy Johnson, we have asked prayer for. We passed a great week this morning. Very dear friend. And there's some other things going on personal, but God knows all about it. And then pray for Adam. Uh, yes, pray for Adam and Sarah. Uh, and Bubba Missy. And Bubba Missy. Yeah, the whole family. Yeah. Um, both sides. Uh, God, needs God prayer. decisions to make. Mm -hmm. And also, pray for one man of Mike Adobe and Len and Ted. Okay. Remember Donna Gano that I always request prayer. Uh, she called me yesterday. She's in the hospital in Braxton County right now, but she's she's getting she's lost so much weight. She's down about 109 pounds. But she was telling me yesterday that they're going to put her in rehab because she was so weak she couldn't even walk hardly when she came to my birthday that day. Her, her son brought her over there. <coughs> and uh, she's, she told me she was going to rehab Dr. Montgomery, so hopefully they can get her back on her feet because she's just so weak she couldn't do anything on her. She's just not eating, I don't think. Because she's been staying by herself. Of course, she's next to her son, but she's been staying a lot in her house, but she is in bad shape.
for the last two days when he's came in to do transactions, we've had church. <laughs> you know, so it, it's, you know, it's, it's been good. Well, also, there was a young man from our area, Jack Cummings. He was the one that was stabbed in Charleston and died. My, Amanda and Christopher both went to uh, school with him, and he wrestled with Christopher. And was he the right man? Yeah, he's a little younger than her. But he was from this area and got stabbed in the leg and went back. Okay. So remember him? They're trying to raise money to have his services right now. Oh, well, okay. Well, uh, we'll go with uh, going once more twice on <laughs> praise reports, testimonies, or songs. But if not, I'm pretty sure Mike has like a whole chapter he wants to get through tonight, right? <laughs> well, uh, yeah, we, we might do something different. I don't know. Oh, yeah? I was thinking about the lesson, and um, you know, it just it just wasn't coming to me today. Okay. You know, now I know why. So when I get up there, we're probably going to be somewhere else. Okay. Um, well, do you guys want me to pipe in uh, an episode of Chosen? I can do that. I mean, I, I, I have something. You have something? I have something, but it's, I don't know how long it's going to be. Okay. Okay. Yeah. I, I just want to talk about something. Okay. And, you know, you know she talked about having a bad day. You know, and I just, you know, so we, we may just go over some things. I just opened my Bible up. We opened it to you. Galatians 5. Galatians 5? You want to go to Galatians 5? We'll go there. Well, do you want to? Yeah. Come on up and do it. <laughs> Thank you, everyone. So we'll just... Do that. Here's your time. I gotta get to do that. Oh. <laughs> you know, like I said, uh, <clears throat> I was, you know, just just been studying the last few days on these ch uh, churches, and it just doesn't, you know, I just haven't really, you know, because, you know, I got a lot of things going on, you know, and I'm, you know, trying to move mountains. You know, with the faith of a mustard seed, you know, and that's 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 hard to do. You know, and I know, it, you know, it's, really, it's always hard to do that. But uh, you know, Steph kind of. Uh, I'm sorry. I don't know where. I'm, I'm sorry. Chapter six. Try chapter six. I don't know why I said. But Galatians uh, chapter six, and uh, Steph kind of you know alluded this the other night. You know about bearing each one's burdens, you know, and that's where we're starting out here in chapter 6, uh, literally sat down, turned to this, you know, and then, like I said, you know, no, I was talking about having a rough day, you know, I feel like I've had a rough three or four months, you know, Amen. and, you know, and each one of us are going through different things, and, you know, we really do need to pray for one another, we really do need right. to bear the burdens of, you know, everyone, you know, I, you know, for myself, you know, um, you know, still dealing with some things where my dad died and trying to get his, um, probate, we haven't even done, we're not even done with the probate, and it's been almost two and a half years, yeah. you know, so I can't get no closure on that, and, you know, and I'm not, you know, up here, you know, wanting pity or anything like that, but I'm just confessing. I want, you know, I'm just telling you what's what's going on. You know, I'm trying to sell my house, you know, and it's it's been a struggle. Three and a half months to get a survey done, you know, and which is going to cost a fortune, but trying to get it done, trying to get it closed up, you know, so I have all these loose ends, and during this time period, my health has, you know, not been the best. You know, but personally don't think that you're looking for pity. He, you know, we're supposed to lean on each other. Mm -hmm. When you have a burden, you put it out here so we can pray. That's not asking for pity. That's asking for you to have prayer and have concern for you. Mm -hmm. Yeah, definitely. You know, so, I mean, this this is for you. This is for me. You know, I, I think this is so very important that we do 
uh, bear one another's burdens. I mean, Amen. if, you know, you know, luckily I, I have Steph that I can go to, and, you know, she's great, and she's just, you know, she, she tells me all the right things, but in my flesh, I don't always listen, you know, and that's the way we do, and it's hard to lean on God, it's hard to give up control, because I'm a fixer, I want to fix everything, yeah. you know, but I can't. You know, and, and she knows that. And but in the past week, we've seen where God has been moving, really. You know, and you know, so you know that's just you know, it's it, it is a good thing to you know confess to, to everyone. You know, because it's too much to take on ourselves. Right. You know, I get to the point where. I just want to be able to sleep more than two hours a night. I want to be able to wake up in the morning without a headache. You know, I want to be able to go to bed. You know, I dread going to bed, to the bedroom, to get in bed. Because I know I'm going to lay in there and just think and think and think. You know. And I understand that my problems, you know, do not compare in some of these other situations that this church is going through and the people this church is going through. But, you know, um, you know, I need your prayers. You know, and you need my prayers. And that's one of the things that has really helped me out. Yeah. Is that when I take the focus off myself and I, and I start praying for these other people, and start looking at their situations instead of looking at myself, it seems like that's the only thing that gives me some kind of relief. You know. That, that you know, I can I can I feel like, you know, like I'm 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 helping that situation. You know, and our prayers do help. Right. And you know, we know um, uh, if you go in Revelation that it, it says that in, in one of the bowls that all the prayers of the saints go in this thing and they're poured out one day and they're all answered. You know, however, you know, God answers them but they're all answered and all our prayers are accumulated in, in heaven. You know, which is, a, which is a wonderful thing because it means something to Christ. He'll it answer, means something to God. Yeah. He'll answer them in His time. Yeah. And it'll surprise us yeah. what, what happened so quick. Yeah, I'm not expecting it. Well, yeah. I can tell you, just from praying for her, there's things changing. Yeah. This is her second time. She just sat down here at the bottom of the road, tell me she wasn't coming. Yeah. Giving me the kids for them to come. Because yeah. they were going to go, but she wasn't coming. And the next thing I know, she's back in the mutual apartment. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Praise so God. Glad to see her. Yeah, so, that's... And her situation, I'm thinking is changing and I know that it will be for the better and that's only because of prayers yeah. because if we hadn't had everybody praying for her she'd be sticking it out right where she was at mm -hmm. we're definitely you know bearing that burden you know and, and, and taking that on you know and like I said it you know it it is something wonderful when when we can do that you know because it it is extremely tough, you know. And I, you know, I, I, I told Steph the other day. I said I haven't felt this bad since, you know, I went through a really bad situation back in, you know, 2010 to 2015, you know, with my divorce. You know, I said I, I don't, you know, I haven't felt this bad since then. You know, I don't know what to do. And I know all the right things. I know this Bible, you know, and I know that God can help, yeah. you know, in whatever situation, you know, that may be, whatever answer may be, you know, but I just, you know, I just need that help to do it. But um, Galatians, we'll get into that, chapter 6. I'll, I'll just read it. And uh, it says here, it says, Brethren, if a man is overtaken in any trespass, you who are spiritually, uh, or spiritual, restore such a one in spirit of gentleness, 
considering yourself less, you also be tempted. Bear one another's burdens, and so fulfill the law of Christ. For if anyone thinks himself to be something, when he is nothing, he deceives himself. But let each one examine his own work, and then he will have rejoicing in himself alone, and not in another. For each one shall bear his own load. <clears throat> Six there. Let, no, let him who is taught the word share in all good things with him who teaches. Do not be deceived. God is not mocked. For whatever a man sows, that he uh, will also reap. For if he sows to his flesh, will of, will of the flesh reap corruption. But he who sows to the Spirit, will of the Spirit reap everlasting life. And let us not grow weary while doing good. For in due season we shall reap, if we do not lose heart. Therefore, as we have opportunity, let us do good to all especially to those who are the household of faith. Yeah, and just, just a couple points there. Yeah, of course, in, in uh, verse 2 there, bear one another's burdens. And it says, and so fulfill the law of Christ. You know, I have a, a couple reference there if somebody would want to look it up. Romans 15, 1, and James 2, 8, if somebody would want to read, you know, one of those verses. Yeah, it's never, it's never about ourselves. It's always about the other person. It's always about our neighbor. It's always about, you know, helping, you know, one another. You know, I, I love it in uh, Acts where it says, you know, um, when, when Jesus ascended and they're out, you know, making disciples of everybody. And it says that, you know, people were added to the church daily, you know, and everyone had everything that they needed and they were just all one and nobody had any more than but if they had food they they ate if they had clothes they, they gave it away you know and that's you know that's that was such a, a wonderful thing there that to live in that kind of situation where you know everything was taken care of you know and that kind of communion you know one to another so yeah I mean I I um, if you get a chance to look that up, like I said, it's an axe, but they, they, I'll look at it, man, I'll find it. But it was just, uh, yeah, let's see. Here. And it's, uh, uh, Acts 2, uh, four, starting there in 42. And it says, and they continued steadfastly in the, uh, the apostles' doctrine and fellowship, in the breaking of bread and in prayers. Uh, and fear came upon every soul, and many wonders and signs were done through the apostles. Now all who believed were together and had all things in common, and sold their possessions and goods and divided them among all, as everyone had need. So continuing daily with one accord in the temple and breaking bread from house to house, they ate their food with gladness and simplicity of heart, praising God and having favor with all the people. And the Lord added to the church daily those who were being saved. You know, what a, what a wonderful, you know, uh, position to be in that. You know, just, you know, I've, I've always loved that. And then verses there. You know, to have that kind of fellowship with one another. You know, because... Like I said, you, you, you take the focus off yourself. You take the focus off your problems. And, you know, it, it, you wouldn't think it helps. 
but it does. You know, it, it, it makes us, you know, love our neighbor as ourselves. You know? You know, we love God first, of course, but we love our neighbor as ourselves. Yeah. And it just, you know, I like that. And we go back to Galatians 6, you know, verse 5, and it says, For each one shall bear his own load. You know, and I, I'm not real sure. You know, maybe it's, it's, it's talking about, um, about uh, verse 3 there. If anyone thinks himself to have, you know, to be something, uh, when he's nothing, he deceives himself. You know, he's going to bear that load. You know, if we're, you know, we're trying to fix ourselves, you know, trying to do it without Christ, trying to do it without the fellowship of our family here, without, you know, the body of Christ, then, you know, we're, we're, we're going to bear that load on all our own. You know. Um, and then we go down to verse 9 there. And it said, uh, Let us not grow weary while doing good. For in due se season we shall reap if we do not lose heart. You know. If we're carrying the burdens of uh, the, everyone, you know, then you know, we're going to reap the rewards from that. We really are. And, you know, and not, not grow weary because I've been pretty weary. Yes, please. For I say, through the grace given unto me to every man that is among you, not to think of himself more highly than he ought to think, but to think soberly, according to God, as dealt to every man the measure of faith. Yeah. Yeah, and it's always about it's always about denying yourself, you know. And you know, Christ says about, you know, deny yourself, pick up the cross daily. Do it daily. You know, which is which is really, you know, really hard at times, you know, because like I said, you know, for myself, you know, I I tend to focus on myself. I'm gonna fix my own problems, you know. But the joy of it is praying for other people, bearing those burdens, and you know, that's that's really something. I like <clears throat> I told Steph, you know, when I was going through that time period back in 2010 through 2015, you know, uh, the only time I really felt really good is when I was helping someone else. You know, and that's that's kind of where I got, you know, if you guys are wondering why I like, I love to do the shoebox thing, you know, that's kind of where that comes from. You know, that, that time period, you know, I got kind of hooked, hooked up with that and it made me feel so good to be able to uh, do those things for those kids. You know? And I, I hope we continue to do that. Uh, me and Gabe's going to, I think Gabe, Gabe, you going to go? Yep. Saturday, Saturday or anyone else wants to go. Uh, it's from 9 to 11, I think, at uh, Gasaway or somewhere. can't remember, but just ask me. I have to pay before it. I can, I, I can put me in the paper right here. But anyway, but, you know, it's, a, it's, it's about that, you know, just, you know, whatever. But does, does anyone have anything else? Like I said, it's going to be short tonight. I don't For somebody else, takes a lot of your worries and burdens off of yourself. Yeah. You know, you're thinking of them. Yeah. Yeah. Yourself. Yeah. And that, that helps out so much. You know, to, to take the focus on yourself. Yeah. And it's a blessing. Or a blessing for helping somebody else. Yeah. 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 That's exactly what I'm saying. You and Ray was thinking the same thing. <laughs> but, yeah, you know. So, when, you know, actually when you're going through uh, struggles, you're going through bad times, you know, you can't get blessings like that. You know, and you know, like like when we get into a lot of this revelation stuff, and just anything you know associated with it, you know, 
Christ is always telling us about enduring. Endure to the end. If you do this, if you persevere, if you have patience, if you just listen, if you listen to my voice, listen to Christ's voice, then you're going to overcome. You're going to overcome this world. You're going to get a crown of life. You're going to get a rock that, you know, has a name on it that only you and God know. That's it. You know, how personal a relationship is that? That the only two people that know that is you and God know that name on your return. And he's going to call you by name. Yeah. You know, so, so we are going to go through, you know, trials in this world. Yeah. Yeah, definitely. Yeah. I, you know, I was thinking about the guy that was here the other night. And he was talking about uh, the Bible's going out and... And uh, you know, just spreading the gospel in these other countries and how they are persecuted. We are so blessed in this country yeah. that we are not persecuted. Yeah. You know, Amen. and I was thinking, uh, my Bible, it's uh, it's getting old. I mean, I've had this thing I think, since I was 17 or 18. But this 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 page right here, you know, I remember a story that uh, Steph's pastor. Uh, told about a guy in China, and I'm not sure when the year was or whatever, but there was a page, and that guy was, was right about when they would break the Bible up and they would pass it around, and then they would, you know. But this th this guy had one page. He had one page of the Bible, yeah. and um, they had like underground churches, and like I said, I'm not sure what the time period was. I'm sure it was earlier in the 19th century or or 1900s or early 1800s, whatever. Um, but um, he had that piece of, of uh, the Bible, just one page, and they killed him for that. Yeah. Wow. You know, you know he, was, he, was, he was martyred for that one page of the Bible. China's doing that now. You know, yeah, and I, I believe it was in China. You know, they were trying to smuggle Bibles and, you know, and uh, like I said, eventually, you know, they, they, they did kill that guy. And we, we are so blessed in this country. Yeah, we, don't, amen. we don't know. I mean, we really, we don't, I mean, I realize, and I take it for granted too, you know, I can go to work and I can preach the gospel to everyone there, and nobody says anything to me. Mm -hmm. You know, yeah. nothing. Yeah. You know, you try that in another country, it's not going to end well for you. Yeah. You know, it really isn't. And, you know, kind of to tie in this revelation stuff, you know, you know, we're going to go through trials. We're going to go through tribulations. And, you know, we, we go through them now, you know. But when you get to revelation, you know, it's, it's the persecution. You know, it's the, you know, it's the choice. You know. And I don't want to get too far into that, you know, but... You know, it's, it, it's the choice. That's why there's a lot of deception. If you've been here and you've seen the timeline that I had up there, you know, that first part of that, you know, it's deception. You know, it's all deception. You know, and we don't want to be deceived, but we want to endure, you know. And doing that, you know, we must carry each one's burdens. You know, so, I know it's early, but that's about all I got. So, any, anybody else got anything? You know, like, I, like I said, you know, it's, you know, it's just imperative that we, we do this, we, that, that we help each other. You know, we help each, each person out. You know, like I said, I'm. I'm a very selfish person. I try to try to focus on myself and try to fix myself. You know, and can't do it. Can't do it without Christ. You know, I always said to my home church up there. I said, it's, you know, they, they always said it takes a village to raise an idiot. And I said, it's taking this church to raise me. <laughs> you know, so, so you know, that's that's where I stand. You know, I guess. So. But you know, I. I hope somebody gets something out of this. And, you know, just, you know. We're, we're in God's army, you know, just like an army. Yep. 
they look after each other. Yeah. And, uh, and we got to look after each other too. Yeah. That's some, uh, uh, let's see, I'm trying to think of that, that song. But uh, it said that God's army is marching on your knees. Yeah. And then yeah. God, that, that's how God's army does it. You know, and they march on their knees. That's right. And then that's, that's, that's what's going to you know, have to happen you know, to this country, to this and there's people, you know, that, that we want to bear the burdens of, you know, we got to pray. We definitely have to pray. And this is an absolute wonderful praying church. Yes, ma'am. You know, and we can see Adam had that, you know, the one thing, you know, you know, bring it up here and give it to God and give it to God and a couple days later, you know, pretty much answered. You know, so it's, you know, it's going in the right direction. It's just very hard sometimes. And my and a lot of my problem is just uncertainty. You know, as I was telling Steph, I said, I, I know that God has this in his hands. I know that he's going to, you know, whatever, good or bad, going to, you know, have his will done, not mine. But I just don't know how he's going to do it. <laughs> you know what I mean? And that's the hard part. That's the faith part. That's the part that, you know, I'm like, I... Don't sleep at night over, you know. So you hope instead of believe. Yeah. And I hope he'll do this. Yeah. See, I believe he'll do this. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. I guess everybody does, you know. We're human. <laughs> yeah. Anyhow, we're impatient. We want to have the answers right now. Yeah. You yeah. Know? So yeah. Yeah. and we are those kinds of creatures, you know, we've got to have it now and my way or whatever, you know. But you know, God's, you know, God's God's. He's got us in, in in His hand. Nobody can. The Bible says nobody's going to snatch us from His hand. Like you said a while ago, you know, you like to work things out yourself, yeah. and sometimes it's hard for us to ask somebody else to help us do something. Yeah. But I, I'm glad that you. I'm going to serve something just like you did. Okay. Yeah. Uh, yeah, I'm, I you absolutely summed it all up because that's me. I don't want to ask for help. Yeah. You know, I'm that kind of person. Yeah. I, know, I want to fix it on my yeah, absolutely. Praise God you said that. You know, because that's that's it, you know. Maybe that's what maybe that's what this is all for. I'm asking for help, you know. But but you know and, and you know that's you know, that's what I realize that and then you know, I I want, you know, to help everyone else, you know, because that's what it should be. Doing. That's what the scripture says. As a Christian, it should be the easiest thing for us to take it to God and leave it there. Yeah. I pick it back up. I pick it back up. I pick it back up all the time. You know that faith of the mustard seed. That should be enough. We should just give it to Him and leave it. There. That should be easy for us. It's easy for me to tell you that you can do that. Yeah. It's a little harder when it's myself. Yeah, it, it definitely is. It's 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 hard when it's three a.m. and you're staring at the ceiling mm -hmm. and you're, you're begging God just for an hour of sleep you know, before I have to get up. You know. I can go here. No. <laughs> I love it. I tell you what, when I was his age, I was the same way. All of us. Like I said, it took the whole church to raise me. And uh, I'd be underneath the pew and all over the place. We had wood floors where you could slide on. Yes, <laughs> <laughs> no words. No words. <laughs> no, no, no. I love it. I love well, it. Last year, John, that's where we were teaching. My son was his size. And the pastor was sitting up there, and the deacon was sitting over here. And came, we just might sit back this far, and Christopher went underneath the pews all the way up and grabbed the pastor by the leg. And he thought it was a snake. <laughs>
Any, anyone else? Anyone have a, you know, what, um, maybe, uh, maybe some other scriptures uh, for encouragement. You know, what? Yeah, that's, that's a lot of stuff tells me. You, know, you need to read scriptures that encourage you. You know, and uh, I wore the shirt tonight. Say your shirt. And uh, uh, I'm going to read that one. Okay. You know, so. Sorry. I can find it. But I, I guess, you know, I mean, uh, that, that is a question. Do you, do you have a scripture that, that uh, encourages you? Yeah, I don't know if, uh, let's see, I think Bubby would probably be the only one. I think it was last year I gave a sermon up here, you know, about, um, you know, uh, and it's funny that uh, Adam preached on this about hearing God's voice. And I, uh, yeah, a long time ago, I, I heard that. And it was, uh, I heard God's voice and it was, be still, you know, is what he said to me. You know, and, and just, just know that I'm God, you know. If I'm just listening to that, you know, you know, you know sometimes, you know, you think you, you have to uh, hear it over and over. But, uh, I'm going to find this here. It's easy to tell somebody else to do that, but you, it's hard to do. Yeah. Okay, yeah. So what it is? Oh, yeah. Okay, go ahead. I will praise thee, O Lord, with my whole heart. I will shoot forth all thy marvelous works. Yeah. He's, he's, uh, what's two say there? It says, I will say to the Lord, He is my refuge and my fortress, my God. In Him I will trust. Surely He shall deliver you from the snare of the folly and from the perilous pestilence. He shall cover you with His feathers, and under His wings you shall take refuge. His truth shall be your shield and buckler. You shall not be afraid of the terror by night. Nor the air that flies the day, nor the pestilence that walks in darkness, nor the destruction that lays waste at noonday. A thousand may fall at your side, and ten thousand at your right hand, but it shall not come near you. Only with your eyes shall you look and see the reward of the wicked, because you have made the Lord, who is my refuge, even the Most High, your habitation. No evil shall befall you, nor shall any plague come near your dwelling. For he shall give his angels charge over you to keep you in all your ways. They shall bear you up in your hands, lest you, lest you dash your foot against the stone. You shall tread upon the lion and the cobra and the young lion and the serpent. You shall trample under your foot. Because he has set his love upon me, therefore I will deliver him. I will set him on high because he has known my name. He shall call upon me and I will answer him. I will be with him in trouble. I will deliver him and honor him. With long life, I will satisfy him and show him my salvation. So, a lot of good truths in there. Does anyone else have a, a verse that, that is a kind of a go to verse?
I was looking for that one. I can't remember where the verse was. No, I, was on, I was right there. But uh, Psalms 46, uh, 10. Get that one. It says, Be still and know that I am God. I will be exalted among the heathen, and I will be exalted in the earth. Anyone else have a favorite verse? The one that I like when I start to get, because I'll get, I'll get uh, caught up in what all I'm supposed to do and what all I'm supposed to know. Okay, am I doing this right or am I doing that right? Am I doing this wrong or that wrong? And, and when it comes down to it, uh, in First Timothy, chapter 3 and verse 16, it tells us uh, what it is to, to be a Christian, what we what we believe at its base. Yeah. Um, I'll, I'll pop it up there really quick. You want to read it? Controversy, great is the mystery of godliness. God was manifest in the flesh, justified in the spirit, seen of angels, preached unto the Gentiles, and believed, believed on in the world, received up into glory. Good one. You know, like with this um, revelation, you know, and I understand it's it's a it's a hard uh, book to understand. But you know, like I always say, we need to be you know uh, making disciples, spreading the gospel. You know, that's that's the real focus. Because yes, there's going to be things happening. But God's going to protect us. He, he's going to be that shelter. He's going to be that fortress for us. You know, He's going to protect us from from those things. But we just we, we really really need to preach the gospel to people so they don't you know don't have to go through the wrath of God. You know, we don't want that. You know. God's heart is that none perish. We should have God's heart. You know, and. and we should wish that no no one perishes. So, man, we just you know, we just need to bear them burdens and you know really really spread the gospel. Well, if somebody had witness to us, we would probably would never become a Christian. Yeah. So we gotta keep it going. Yeah. <coughs> yeah definitely. 
First John chapter 1 verse 9 says if we confess our sins he is faithful and just to forgive us our sins and cleanse us from all unrighteousness mm -hmm. God's the only thing we can count on yeah. we can't count on anything else I can't count on fixing my own problems I can I can count on God fixing my problems <clears throat> Anyone have anything else? Are we pop the announcements up there? And... Yeah, I, like I said, I, I, I think the thing is at Gasaway or somewhere. Gasaway? Okay. Yeah, Gasaway, I think. It's a Flatwoods area. Oh, okay. Yeah. Sure. Yeah. yeah. I think it's just out of Gasaway. Yeah, I can't remember. I can't even remember where Gasaway is. It's up 79. Up 79, okay. Yeah. All right. <clears throat> Yeah, so it is. Yeah, uh, Saturday's going to be busy to get to the uh, women's conference at Laurel Fork. Uh, and then, uh, like I said, the shoebox meeting, if anybody wants to go, you know, you can, you know, ride along with me or whatever. What is the shoebox meeting? I don't Okay, it's a Samaritan's Purse, and what they do is they actually take shoeboxes and and uh, they fill them full of toys and coloring books and there's all kinds of, there's a list of stuff, uh, brushes, toothbrushes, and what they do is they take them and they send them overseas. You know, for, for uh, kids, they collect them uh, the week of November 14th and they collect them and they make sure that the, the kids get them before Christmas so that actually the kids from overseas get get a, a shoe box for Christmas. So it's a... Uh, I think the first year they did like 26 or 25,000 shoe boxes. They did it, I, I, think, you know, I think it was in the Europe, or around Europe or something like that. But it's, it's up to like 20 million shoe boxes, I think, have been distributed in the past year or so. So are they wanting donations or? Well, what we do is we'll, we'll get the shoe boxes and then. Um, there's a list of things that you can put in the shoe boxes and things you can't. Uh, of course, no military kind of thing. Um, these are going to be on a plane, so there's no like no liquids, no shampoos, lotions, stuff like that. I uh, we'll have to get. Uh, do you have a? Can you look up a, a list of it? Can you bring the shoe boxes back here? Uh, what? Well, what what we do is they have shoe boxes that we buy, you know, and uh, so last year we bought 50 of them. We have them set up right here and just. If you find stuff on clearance, notebooks, pencils, toothbrushes, uh, hairbrush, um, like I said, there's a whole list of stuff that you can get. Um, crayons, soccer balls, markers, you know, crayons. You know. Yeah, you can do socks, shirts. You know, they have different age groups. They have like two to four, and well, if he brings it up here, like five to eight, and nine to fourteen, or something like that. Get them toys, get them Hot Wheels, get them whatever, you know, just, just little things. The best thing to do is hit the clearance aisle at Walmart and find things like that or whatever. And, and uh, we just fill them up as much as we can get in them. And yeah, there we go. And you can, you can choose uh, uh, a boy or a girl, you know, and then uh, there's a the different items that, you know, a doll, a little musical instrument, um, pencil stuff, sharpener. yeah, pencil sharpener, stuffed animals, uh, personal care items, uh, comb brush, toothbrush, washcloth, uh, bandages, re, uh, reusable eating uh, utensils, you know, clothes, um, sunglasses, cold weather items, flip flops, shoes, you know, just crafts. 
of all kinds of you know different things. I think we found some boxes last year, like pencil boxes, and just stuffed them full of whatever we could get in. Yeah. <clears throat> found some slinkies. We found little etch -a sketches last year, small ones. Put those in there. Uh, horse of dinosaurs. Uh, building blocks. Just stuff that, I mean, is it just like a normal size? It is a literally a shoe box, you know, and like I said, we, we, I put, we, we put as much stuff in them as we can. Because like I said, these kids, they get nothing. Yeah. They have nothing. Yeah. You know, so it's, just, it's a wonderful uh, program, like I said. Can you see where, uh, how many they've actually dis distributed? Because I was thinking it was like 27 million. Yeah, there's there's stuff there that you can't include. Like I said, there's uh, they're going to be on a plane, so you can't take any liquids or anything like that. Maybe go up to uh, the top there, get up who we are and what we do, history. Okay, yeah, and, and the thing about this is that, if, that when they distribute these boxes, they get the kids to come in and they tell them about Jesus. And then they give them a box. Mm -hmm. you know, so. <clears throat> uh, maybe, you think maybe I'm going to get that one? Yeah. Yeah, I'm trying to think of how many they've done. I'm not sure where it is on their site. I don't know. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, this is the 50th, 50th year anniversary this year? Well, in 2020. Oh, in 2020. Okay, I didn't read it up. That gives like the whole... Whole history of it. <laughs> oh, okay. Uh, maybe their web page has a 50th anniversary thing. Yeah, I was thinking they had a a place where they. they yeah, had I have no idea. No idea. Uh, well, whatever. I mean, but you can go online, and they'll actually you can do it all online if you want to build a box. Um, I think it's a little bit expensive to do that, and you can kind of personalize it, you know. If, if if we do it here, and then um, yeah, if you want to enclose a personal note or anything like that, uh, I think we put uh, little crosses in them last year. Yeah. You know, so some tracks. Yeah, just anything. You know. So it's it, it's a good outreach for for children. Yeah. Yeah, because you know, not all of us can go overseas. If the items do change on the page, if you're if you're looking into it later, yeah, the the, the, the age groups and everything like that. So, but yeah, just be thinking about that. Um, like I said, um, I hit the clearance aisle at Walmart and just try to buy a little stuff, you know, and then we just start bringing it in, just bringing it in here. I think we do have some stuff left from last year. Maybe some toothbrushes, combs. I think we have. Maybe we before you buy them, let's see what we have because I think I think like several people bought combs and hairbrushes and toothbrushes and I think we had several. So, but uh, well, now there's a site on the internet. It's T M U to move, and they have Team, yeah. they have a lot of stuff that's really cheap that sounds yeah. Like oh yeah, yeah. We can get uh, Laura and. and uh, <laughs> And she, she can uh, order all that stuff. Yeah. <laughs> but, um, well, uh, like I said, it's a kind of unconventional night, but that's all right. I hope you guys got something out of it. Mm -hmm. Maybe it was just for me. I don't know. No, it's for me. I want much better. I'll turn it over to you.
Thank you. 